Today I'm going to go over how to put together and use the 6-in-1 Universal Trim Router Jig. First of all, huge thank you to everybody who ordered so far and thank you so much for the support and all the positive feedback. Here is what's going to come in your kit. There will be a bag for the hardware pieces and the rest of it is going to be wrapped in paper. Each hardware kit comes with two handles, one of which will have a threaded pin that's taped to it. This threaded pin is very small, so be careful not to lose it. Just set it off to the side. And there are six knobs and eight bolts. To make sure that I'm not going to lose that threaded pin, during assembly, I just keep it attached to the tape next to the other pieces. All the acrylic parts are shipped with a paper backing to protect them from getting scratched during the manufacturing process and shipping. It's easy to remove it, but if you're having any difficulties at all, just hit it with a heat gun or a hair dryer and it should come right off. You should have one main base piece, two extension arms, two extension feet with a smooth hole in the center, one extension foot that has a threaded hole in the center, and one triangle base that has a threaded hole as well. All this information is included in the instructions that are emailed to you after you purchase. The instructions are not included in the box just to save on paper, so you don't need to print them out. But it would be helpful if you print out the second page of the instructions, which is the guide to line up the holes for your router. It's not necessary, but it's definitely helpful. Let me show you. There's a color-coded guide at the bottom of the page based on which router brand you have. Simply take the acrylic base and put it on the paper. All the holes should line up and all you have to do is take a permanent marker or something like that and mark out the correct holes based on the color guide below. Next, remove the stock base plate from your router and do not lose those screws. Now it's easy to find the holes to use for your router because they're marked out in permanent marker, but you may need to rotate the base 90 or 180 degrees because there's asymmetrical holes on the router bases sometimes. When putting the screws in, do not lock the screws down right away. Just place them in loosely, and then once all four are in loosely, then tighten them all down. Next, place two bolts in the holes designated for the handles on the underside of the main base plate and flip the whole base plate over. Now those T-bolts are locked into place while you twist on both of the handles. But if you plan on using this jig with a plunge base, it might be more comfortable to remove the handles since plunge bases already have handles on them. One last thing before we get into the demo, the threaded pin that you don't want to lose. You can store it in one of the rectangle feet that has the threaded hole. There is never an operation where it's going to be required to remove this pin. So it's a great idea to just store it in here all the time. And that is all there is to it. This first operation is set up just like this without any of the attachments. And this is to help with freehand routing. This is great for any operation where you want complete control over your router. Like if you're doing handmade signs or if you wanna make mortises for things like dovetail keys. The extra wide base and the two handles just make it super comfortable to hold and you have so much control so you could get right up to your lines. The next operation is to flush trim inlays or proud joinery. So pretend like this dowel here is like a dovetail key or like a dowel, a through tenon that's going through some sort of tabletop. So the idea here is that you want to lift the jig up off of the surface so that it's higher than the amount that's sticking out from this piece over here. And we do that with the base pieces. You could do this operation with any of the feet attached to the base, but I highly suggest using the base that has a triangle shape on it. This way you can get into tight corners. Simply place the pieces onto the bottom of the jig and use the supplied bolts and knobs to lock them into place. To set the depth of the bit, I like to use a piece of paper. I place the paper underneath the bit and then I lower my router until it touches the top of that piece of paper and then remove it. That way the bit is set slightly above the top of the material. Now run your router along any material that's protruding out and it should be nice and flush. Awesome. The next setup is to use it as an edge guide for dados, grooves, and mortises. So if you want to make a groove going along this piece, how are you going to keep your router straight? So you use any one of the base pieces 
on the underside to make sure that you are running along the edge of your workpiece. To do this, you can use any of the extension pieces. You can use the regular rectangle piece. You can use the triangle piece because there's a straight edge over here. And you can even use the extension arms that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. And also one thing to note, when you are using this, it does not matter how straight or square you put this piece onto the base. It's like a router table. All it's going to reference this straight edge. So it doesn't matter if you set up a straight edge like that, even with these pieces, you are going to cut a straight line because it's cutting and referencing this edge over here. So just don't stress when you're attaching them on. I always like to assemble mine upside down so that I could just loosely put everything into place and then flip it over and adjust it to exactly where I need it when it's right side up. To use it, adjust your cut line, set the depth and run the router along the edge of your workpiece. And it should make a super straight cut as long as the workpiece that it's referencing is straight. When using the rectangle extension feet, the max distance you can get from the edge of your workpiece is about four and a half inches. But if you want to route further from the edge, you can use the extension arms. The extension arms get locked into place on top of the main base, but when it's upside down, it's underneath the main base. In order for this to work as an edge guide, you're going to need two of the rectangle base bases. And this is so that that first layer is level with the main base and it just acts as an extension. And then the second rectangle piece acts as the edge guide. I like to use the piece with the threaded pin so that you can stack the two pieces nice and neat and they'll move together in unison as you adjust it. These two stacked pieces get locked into place with the bolts and knobs. Now with the extension arms in place, the max distance that you can route from the edge is about 14 and a half inches. When using the edge guide extended all the way out, I like to support it with my right hand as I'm pushing it along and then with my left hand, I hold on to one of the handles on the jig and I feel really comfortable and safe to do it this way. But for the most part, I primarily use the edge guide without the extension arms for doing things like cutting mortises. So let me show you how to cut a mortise using this jig. So after marking it out, I would line up the edge of the bit with the edge of the mortise that I want to cut and adjust the edge guide and lock it in place. Then I move the whole jig so the router bit is at the end point of the mortise. And then I use one of the rectangle base pieces and I use some double-sided tape to tape it into place and use as a stop. Now I just need to take multiple passes until the mortise is cut. Since this mortise is wider than the bit I'm using, I just need to adjust the edge guide so that it cuts to the distance that I need. If the mortise you're making is wider than the bit you're using, you can also set it up so that you don't have to adjust the edge guide by putting on two edge guides and making sure that they are in line with the mortise you want to make. And then just do the same process by routing first on one side and then adjusting the whole jig over and then routing on the other side. Then you just have to keep plunging down and getting to the depth that you need. The edge guide is great for making things like dados, grooves, and mortises, but it could also be used to make things like splines. Check this out. The idea is that the edge guide just needs to run along the edge to cut a straight line. So I made this super simple quick jig with a flat surface with a hole in it and then four blocks that were cut at an angle. Attach those on with some glue and brads and you could place that on top of a corner, clamp it down and use this edge over here as a reference with the jig. And this just scratches the surface of all the possibilities that you can do using the edge guide. Now let's talk circle cutting. There are multiple ways to cut a circle with this jig. They all require using the threaded pin, the really small pin that you don't want to lose. You could put this pin either in the triangle base or the rectangle base that has the threaded hole. Either one would work fine. And there's also multiple ways that you could do this, one by drilling a hole in your workpiece and one without drilling a hole in your workpiece. First, I'll show you with drilling a hole. For this demo, I'll put the threaded pin in the triangle base, 
but for circle cutting, you always need at least two base pieces so that you're working with a level surface. With this setup, you could place the pin towards the bit or away from the bit. If you do it towards the bit, you can get really, really, really small circles, like about um, a one inch radius. So two inch diameter circles. And if you face it away from the bit and push it as far away from the bit as possible, you can cut about like eight and a half inch radius, but don't forget, there's also the extension arms. This works just like any other circle cutting jig. Since the pin is a quarter inch, you just have to drill a quarter inch pilot hole and then just rotate the whole jig around. Now this is the biggest circle that it can make, but when you flip the triangle base so that the pin is towards the bit, you can make super small circles. That is pretty awesome. Now let's see how big we can get with the extension arms. The extension arms get placed on top of the jig, but if you're working upside down, that's the bottom of what you're looking at. And then that triangle base gets placed on top of the extension arms. When the extension arms are used for circle cutting, you don't need this extra base piece here because the triangle base is level with the main base. Now that's about an 18 and a half inch radius, but it will be different based on what size bit you're using, whether you want the inside cut, outside cut, but it's about there, it's pretty big. Big enough that I maxed out my plywood sample piece, so I'll show you guys how to do an arc instead of a circle. But what if you wanna make a circle and you don't wanna drill in the center of your board, like if you're making a round cutting board. Here's how to do that. For this operation, you're going to need all of the base pieces, but you're going to leave one that has a smooth hole off to the side for now. To do this operation, you could put the threaded pin in the rectangle base or the triangle base. It does not matter, but I already showed you how to cut circles with the triangle base. Now let's use the rectangle base. The piece with the threaded pin is a single layer on one side, and then the other two pieces are stacked on the other side. Instead of drilling a hole this time, you take the extra base piece and you stick it down to your workpiece using double-sided tape. Now the threaded pin is going to fit into that hole, and the reason why you have the stacked layer on the other side is so that everything is level now, taking into account the thickness of the piece that you're double-sided tape to your workpiece, and then just use it as a regular circle jig like you would any other circle cutting jig. Except there is no hole in the center of your board. Awesome. If you wanna make a circle with the extension arms and you don't want to drill a hole, the only difference is that you will remove one of the stacked pieces on the other side because the piece with the threaded pin is already level with the main base. One thing to note, if you wanna make a really small circle without drilling a hole in the center of your piece, you may find that there's an issue with the base piece getting in the way of the router bit, and you may think that it's not possible. But with the help of the jig, it actually is possible. All you need to do is set the jig so it's cutting the smallest possible circle on a piece of quarter inch material like MDF, and cut out that circle. Now you can use that as your base piece instead of one of the supplied acrylic pieces. The next operation is for flush trimming edge banding. I like to make my edge banding just a little bit thicker than the plywood I'm putting it on. That way I don't have to worry about lining it up when I glue it up. And then I could flush trim it afterwards. Of course you can use a flush trim bit to clean that up, but you have to hold your router on the edge, which sometimes just isn't so stable. So the idea here is to keep the router as stable as possible by keeping it on the face of the material and you flush trim it this way instead of having to hold the router this way. For this operation, you're going to need all of the feet and you do not need to remove the threaded pin from the piece that's holding it. All you have to do is slip one of the other pieces over it and it falls into the smooth holes that's on it so it stays nice and neat and stacked. Then you take the third rectangle foot and place that on top of those two, offset from them, and lightly tighten all three of them using the bolts and knobs. 
On the other side goes the triangle base, and it doesn't matter which way you put it, pointy part towards the bit or away. For this, I'm just gonna do it away. It really doesn't matter. Now that the pieces are lightly bolted in place, I'll show you how to set it up on your workpiece. First, adjust the triangle piece so the side of it is close to the edge banding, and then move the whole router base so that the router bit is on top of the edge banding. Then adjust the stacked pieces on the other side. The bottom offset piece should be touching or right next to the side of the edge banding. The purpose of this stacked setup is so that the router bit does not chew up these two stacked pieces over here, and this bottom offset piece can ride along the edge banding, keeping this whole setup nice and stable. One thing to note when setting it up, do not stress about these pieces being straight or square to each other. They can be totally offset and askew, and it does not matter at all. As long as this piece is running against the edge of your workpiece, it's gonna be totally fine. I use a paper, again, to set the bit height so it's just above the material. Now simply run the jig across the face of the piece and your edge banding should be flush. If your edge banding is thicker than the size bit that you're using, just do this in two passes. Or use this setup to trim up proud joinery, like on these box joints I demoed on my intro to joinery video. Now something we added since the original design was the ability to add a guide bushing. So I use guide bushings a lot when I'm template routing and guide bushing now fits nicely in the center there and it locks into place on the inside. I'm gonna link down below to a guide bushing set that will fit in here. This is awesome for template routing. Another cool feature is that you can flip it upside down and put it in a vise to use as a makeshift router table. Just some general usage tips. You want to make sure you're locking the knobs down pretty tight so that nothing is moving while you're using it. Also, make sure to take multiple passes, but this is just a general routing rule. You definitely don't want to go deeper than your bit is wide. So let's say you have a quarter inch wide bit. You don't wanna go deeper than a quarter inch. So if you're cutting out a circle on three quarter inch material, you have to take multiple passes in order to get that. Or if you're um, hogging out a mortise, you have to take increments to get down to that. And that's just general, even if you're not using this jig, that's just a general routing rule. So that about covers what's included in the kit. But as I was doing this, I thought of some other things that you could do. Like if you wanna make grooves that are equally spaced apart, you can make custom pieces that are the same size as your router bits and figure out a way to attach it onto the base. And then you could put this into the already cut grooves and then your grooves are going to be equally spaced apart. Or if you want to cut circles that are larger than what the extension arms can cut, you can make your own custom pieces. The point is that the base with the holes in here is already there. So you have a really solid foundation to work with to add on attachments and jigs. So remember the instructions that come with this that I just went over, it does not come in the box. It will be emailed to you after you purchase. So check your spam uh, box for that. But speaking of purchasing, we are officially sold out of this first run. I cannot believe the amount of positive feedback we've been getting so far. And seeing as there's such a demand for this, we are definitely going to do another run. So if you wanna get your hands on one, there's going to be a link down below to sign up to be notified when we have more in stock. And once again, I just wanna thank all of you guys for all your support, kind words, positive feedback. This could not be done without you. This is just the beginning. I definitely have some more ideas that I wanna to bring to market. So if this goes well, I'm going to be um, introducing more jigs and more products. And I just really cannot wait to get started and show you guys everything that's going on in my head. So really, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, cannot do this without you guys. And also cannot do this without a lot of my amazing sponsors like Woodcraft. So definitely go check out the links down below where you'll find links to all the bits and accessories and things that I use, the routers. Go check them out. And if you are interested in getting one, sign up to be notified when they're going to be back in stock. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.